Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Bigenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. This week, Location took a look at intramural sports in the Dixon Center. Let's take a closer look. Hi, this is Kelly from Location, and we are reporting outside the Dixon Center here at Cabrini College. We just spoke with Andy West, and we talked a little bit about the intramurals that are going on this semester, and we're going to go take a further look about what he had to say. The purpose of the goal of intramural sports is several things. Um, number one is always physical fitness. We want people to stay healthy. Playing intramural sports is a great way to do that. Um, you get to be in a competitive environment, but it's also a great way to build camaraderie within your group of friends within your residence hall. To me, it's one of the best things in the world is when you see a residence hall team come out. It's great for freshmen who don't know each other, a way to get to know each other, have some fun together. Um, on a Sunday night, flag football is 5 p.m. to typically 9 p.m. on Sunday. So it's just a great way for students to stay healthy, get a little bit of competition, and meet other students. What we offer is um, the two big ones every year are intramural basketball, intramural football. Those are the ones where we really get the most um, participants. But we also have a couple other ones that we're doing this year that are single day events, like we had a bag toss over in the Commons the other day. We did a chip, chipping challenge the other day in the Commons. Um, coming up October 1st, we're going to have a battleship competition where we're going to get some canoes in the pool and you get to have a team in your canoe. And the goal is to sink other teams' canoes with buckets and whatever else you can bring um, to kind of try and sink the other person's canoe. The last canoe remaining afloat with the people in it will win. So we're trying some interesting things like that as well and just kind of Look, always looking for new things to try. If a student ever has an idea for an intramural sport that maybe we don't have, if they want to come, talk to Orlin Jesperson about it. He's up on the second floor of the Dixon Center. His phone number is 610-225-3909. And uh, he's a great person to contact if you ever think that we need an intramural sport that we don't have or offer. For further more information about the intramurals going on here at Caprini College this semester, check out our website. This is Kelly, on location, for location. Thanks. Are you ready to kick off the start of your fall season? The 19th annual Radnor Fall Festival is just around the corner next Sunday, September 16th. Enjoy catching up with neighbors and friends while enjoying delicious food from local restaurants, live music, and the Valley Forge Military Band, and so much more. And one lucky winner will get the chance to win a gift certificate from Christopher's Restaurant. More information on specific festival happenings is at radnorfallfestival.com. Also starting September 18th, Fall classes at the Wayne Art Center will begin. Classes will include all levels of drawing, painting, ceramics, and much more. But art will not be the only class offered. There will be an opportunity for culinary classes as well. Where you can learn many techniques from local chefs, check out the full schedule at www.wayneart.org. That was your news from around the block, and now here's Rob with sports. Cavalier Athletics began play this weekend with the men's soccer team losing both games at the Union College Classic in Schenectady, New York. They lost to the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute 2-1 on Friday with freshman Boomer Steigelman posting the lone Cavs goal and lost to Union College 1-0 on Saturday. The women's soccer team lost the team's home opener 1-0 in overtime to Susquehanna University. This is the Lady Cavs' first opening day loss since 2005. The volleyball team broke even at the Greg Giovinazzi Memorial Tournament this past weekend dropping their first two games to Johns Hopkins University and Hiram College. They beat host school Goucher College and DeSales University and placed fifth overall. The women's tennis team dropped their season, home, and CSAC opener 7-2 on Marywood University on Saturday. The field hockey team lost two games at the Drew University Fall Festival this weekend, losing the first game 2-0 to Swarthmore College and the second game 3-2 to Drew. This week's Location Athlete of the Week goes to senior opposite, opposite side hitter Meg Ryan of the volleyball team as her 22 kills led the Cavs this past weekend. In Philly sports, longtime Philly shortstop Jimmy Rollins became the fourth Philly to reach the 2,000 hit plateau, joining the likes of Ed Delahanty, Richie Ashburn, and Mike Schmidt. Rollins reached the plateau with a double down the first baseline in the fifth inning of Tuesday night's 2-1 loss to the Cincinnati Reds at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. The Phillies currently sit 18 and a half games back in the NL East and nine back in the wild card following Tuesday's loss. They will return home this weekend to take on the Colorado Rockies, a series that includes the famous Cabrini College night at the Phillies on Friday. They will also take on the Miami Marlins early next week to close out this six-game homestand. The Eagles closed out their preseason record 4-0 for the first time since 1995 with a 28-10 victory over the New York Jets last Thursday at Lincoln Financial Field. They will travel to Cleveland to take on the Browns this Sunday at 1 p.m. 
The Eagles roster currently sits at the 53-player limit. Several notable players to be cut included cornerback Yosil Johansson, free agent signing safety O.J. Otogwe, and quarterback Mike Kafka. That's all I've got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week as I've got results of Cavalier Athletics as they try to rebound from a tough weekend, as well as results from the Eagles Week 1 and the Phillies playoff hopes. I'll also have full coverage of Cabrini United at the Phillies. Now back to Valerie. Earlier this week in New York, an elderly gentleman was arrested for pouring acid on his daughter. The 49-year-old daughter went to visit her 69-year-old father, Jerome Lynch, when he unexpectedly came up behind her and poured acid on her face and body. She was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Half of her body suffered burns and she was blinded in her left eye for days. Family and friends have no idea how the gentleman got the acid and are still in question as to why this incident even occurred. How many times have you heard the warning not to stick your arms out of a moving vehicle window? A 16-year-old in New Jersey died last week after sticking his head out of a party bus's roof hatch. Daniel Fernandez poked his head out through the emergency hatch of the double-decker bus and he hit an underside of an overpass. News quickly spread over Twitter. Friends and family posted tweets about staying strong just moments after the accident occurred. Fernandez was rushed to the hospital and was pronounced dead on the arrival. That was your news across the nation. Now here's Christine with your entertainment update. Hi guys, I'm Christine with your weekly entertainment update. Over the Labor Day weekend, 100,000 fans gathered behind the city of Brotherly Love skyline for a celebration of music, community, and freedom. Budweiser's Made in America Festival was headlined by Jay-Z and Pearl Jam. The two-day festival spanned several city blocks and was the first ticketed event the Benjamin Franklin Parkway has ever hosted. Finally, Kelly Ripa gets a leading man who's here to stay. Former NFL player Michael Strahan joined Live with Kelly as a permanent co-host on Tuesday's morning show. The former New York Giant jogged on set and picked up co-host Kelly Ripa in a bear hug, lifting her off her feet. It must be nice to literally have a co-host sweep you off your feet. So it's about time, but Tori Spelling has a new leading man in her life, five-year-old son Finn Davey. The excited mother is teasing fans with these pictures of the tiny tot on Twitter with ac without actually revealing his face yet. Having previously uploaded a picture of Finn's finger wrapped around her own, Tori later posted the intimate snap of her son's fragile head alongside with the caption, so in love. That's all I have for this week. Tune in next week for updates of the 2012 VMAs, which airs tomorrow at 8 p.m. A Caprini student recently had the opportunity to visit a mission in Africa. She sits down with her own Kevin Bullioni to talk about her experiences. Melanie Greenberg. Senior Communications Major at Cabrini College. She recently took a trip to Swaziland, Africa, where she worked in the missions. She's joining us today to tell us about her experiences. So, Melanie, can you uh, describe, you know, what gave you the drive to go to Africa? Spring semester, sophomore year, there were two people who came over from Swaziland, Sharon and Simo, and they did a presentation for my ECG class, my ECG 200 with Dr. Zurich, and I don't know what happened, I just kind of, decided that that was important to me um, because I'd always been really interested in working with HIV AIDS mm -hmm. and then this was uh, orphans and vulnerable children. So something just sparked in me and I just started asking professors all over campus who'd gone to share photos with me and to tell me about their experiences and to start asking if there was any way we could get a student trip planned. It took me basically a week and a half to actually realize I was in Africa I remember I was sitting next to Dr. Berenbaum while the boys played soccer, um, which they love over there. And the boys didn't even have shoes or shin guards. But we were sitting there and we were just watching all these cows and goats walk across the field. And it was just so random. And she goes, we're sitting in Africa right now. Yeah, so uh, can you describe some of the experiences you had? Like, I know you went to a few, you went to schools. Yes, uh, I sat in on a few Form 4 classes, which are the older kids. And I sat in on a math class, even though I, I said, I want to go to all the classes, just don't put me in a math class. And I went to a math class. Okay. And I had taken this class, this math, senior year of high school. I don't even know what it was. And he was doing the problem so fast on the board that I didn't even know what was going on. And so I actually started helping the kids at night with their homework, because um, they have study hours at night at the hostel. And I felt really good being able to help them with their math, but then also helping them with their English. Um, they didn't know what the word adorable meant. It was really, really emotional for me because we were talking about what they want to be when they're older. 
And for me, I wanted to tell them like to keep pushing because they can do whatever they want. But over there, it's really not like that. Uh, well, after your trip, would you say that it kind of changed your whole perspective on life? And would you encourage other people to, you know, leave the country and do, you know, what you did in Africa? In, in our ECG classes, we always talk about understanding other people from other cultures and actually experiencing it. And as much as I understood what life was like in other areas of the world, I have a whole new perspective now, having been there and having to drive an hour just to get food certain days, you know. Um, mm -hmm. They, you know, they built their own like water system there because they've been in a drought for 30 years. But so it's made me a lot more thankful, a lot more grateful for things. Um, but still there are some days that I wake up and I have to remind myself like, what I did during those two weeks because it's so easy to fall back into the way you were living life before. Mm -hmm. um, and Dr. Zurich always told me, because I explained to him, like, the one night, this, it's so corny, but the, the stars were just so bright because we were in the middle of nowhere. And when you looked at the stars and then you looked beyond the ones that were just there, it was like this whole veil. And it was just a moment for me where I felt like I was like so small and that, that like everything was so infinite. Um, and so he always reminds me to think of that when I'm having a hard time remembering what I did there. Well, Melanie, thank you very much for taking the time out to be with us. Thank you. Well, I'd like to once again thank Melanie for taking the time to be with us. That's all I got for you today. Have a good one. As the Arab Spring revolutions continue in the Middle East, women are still fighting for equality there. Reports from BBC's Bethany Bell in Cairo say that harassment of women venturing out in public continues in some parts of Egypt and is growing worse. It's becoming an everyday occurrence for the women. Some women reportedly are too afraid to leave their homes due to the fact that someone could potentially harass them. Egyptian women are supposed to dress conservatively and not show skin, but that does not seem to matter to the men in Egypt. These women are still being targeted. The women want to be able to walk freely and not have to worry about being touched. Tragedy strikes in northern Syria where 19 people were killed due to the government warplane bombings caused by the current civil war in Syria. Men were seen searching through debris for bodies. This added to the 23,000 people who have already been killed due to the rule of the Syrian president to stop a rebel uprising. The United Nations have tried to start a peace plan, but all attempts have failed so far. On a lighter note, Great Britain's teen swimmer Ellie Simmons won her second 2012 Paralympic gold medal. She won the 200 individual medleys. Her victory secured Great Britain's place at the medals table. Simmons suffered from dwarfism, but will never give up hope for his swimming career. Thanks for staying tuned in with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Bethany Biggenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Have a good week, Cabrini.